<laughs> I was like, that was fantastic. <laughs> look at us. Mm-hmm. Look at us. Yep. So is hormonal a bad word? Um, I think if it's taken out of context, it's like if you're saying like a woman is sensitive, that if you, uh, guess what? They're supposed to be sensitive. So if we don't understand about women, we think it's bad. So being hormonal is a great thing. And because you, you don't want hormones to be off. So, and there's changes that happen with women all the time in hormones. So hormonal is a great thing. I want to know everything about getting your hormones tested. Yeah. How do you do it? And what does it tell you? Well, we have to step back and look at what, where women have been misled. The biggest thing that, uh, that I started 25 years ago was really simple. And obviously most people know my wife's story now is she was very sick. She suffered from endometriosis. And that's very common to have a uh, very dominant estrogens that exist there. Well, when I started to look at her labs that her physicians were doing, they were dramatically incomplete. Now, what do I mean? You know, when I, when I talk about hormones, I usually start and say, okay, listen, if you're dating a man or married a man, uh, the major hormone that makes him who he is, is testosterone. Everybody, everybody knows that. It's a simple hormone. There's testosterone free. It's, it's quite well known. But here's the one thing. Well, the woman, when she looks at the hormones that make her who she is, um, women don't understand that's estrogen. But then I start to say, okay, listen, ladies, do you understand estrogen is not a hormone? And that's where women go, wait, what are you talking about? Well, estrogen really is a term that represents many hormones. And then I ask women, have you had all of them measured? And just that simple phrase right there is going, number one, they didn't know that it's a term that describes many and then have never had them fully tested um, because once again, our current system is looking to measure just one or two. And I just can't, I just don't believe that's right. I, I believe the fact that if, if these things can dictate you both mentally and physically, and we're taking a little small snapshot of it, um, you're just having such an incomplete view of it. So therefore, I just started calling lab companies and said, can we do this? And no joke, the response was, yes, why? And insurance doesn't pay for it. And I was like, but I have a very sick woman that I want to marry, and she has endometriosis. So we did, obviously. And and then we started to test that way a long time ago. And and it's um, it actually really started to answer some questions for people clinically. And then doctors of all kinds started calling me going, hey, what are you doing? And I started showing them and, and just kind of exploded, just like our, our message last time. You said there's multiple estrogen hormones that need to be tested. How many? Well, standardly, you at least want to get 10 of them measured. You're saying, 10 of them? Yes. So, yeah. And, and that's the thing, because most women think of like, you know, estradiol, which is the major component for cyclic women. And if you're menopausal, estrone. And that's what Christy had measured. As a cyclic young lady at 23 years old, she had done many times, estradiol is measured. And what really threw them off was it was normal. And when you look at the condition of endometriosis, you usually have higher levels of estrogens. And um, of course they said, well, obviously then it has to be genetic because the one marker we measured wasn't off. So therefore everything has to be normal. And that is very common when women have to even test their thyroid today. And so we just said, okay, listen, you gotta get them all tested. But what really was important to me was sharing the message going, hey, listen, you need both blood and urine done together. Because if you just do one or the other, once again, the, the testing to me is very incomplete. Who needs to be getting their hormones tested? Just women or men too? Well, what I want you to do is this. Um, can you hold your two fingers up like this? I'll put it against your neck. If you feel a pulse, you have to get measured. <laughs> 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 so that means basically everybody. Because I, here's one thing that we talked about last time. They affect you both physically and mentally. And if we look at the current healthcare system today, most people are having a lot of physical and mental problems that are hormonally related. And so I just tell people, just get a picture because these can be some contributing factors, them being abnormal. And actually, if they're not normal, it, there's such things that can be devastating, everything from just mental illness to breast cancer, to prostate problems, to every condition on the planet. Should somebody get their hormones tested even if they're not experiencing any abnormal symptoms? Well, what I always do is this, is uh, most people know now I have four daughters and my daughters have been labs done since they were little. Now, once again, and that's why a lot of people don't do those things because what they'll do is they say, well, insurance doesn't pay for it. I'm like, I don't care. I'll just pay for it anyways. But the idea is this is because here's what happens. You can catch things way early. It's like when a person has their thyroid tests and their anti uh, their um, antibodies come back very high. But guess what happens? You caught it way before something happens to where it starts to go down. You can catch all these hormonal problems very early and start to actually make the positive changes. So actually they never turn out to be bad. See, I was going to ask you that. How early should you start getting your hormones tested? Like, should you be testing your children? Do you wait till you're in your teens, yeah. 20s? Well, I have a standard rule. Like I said, there's, you know, just as my personal bias is having daughters myself, I started testing about 10 years old and before they were cyclic. And then what it did, it just allowed me to keep them in decent ranges that way that they weren't starting to elevate too early. And so therefore, you know, we want to make sure that the things, and then they, they've transitioned. I've, I have only two cyclic girls and stuff because I still have a 14-year-old and a 10-year-old. So I figure in the next 
couple of years there, they'll be hitting their cycle and stuff. So uh, I started at 10 years old for all my daughters and had them measured every single year. And, um, and then, then because their hormones were normal, they never experienced things like PMS and all the problems that other young ladies do. Why should somebody get their labs done with a doctor like you versus their standard clinician yeah. or standard physician? I think you should get them done no matter who will do them as long as they're complete. For example, you know, like we did last time, I said, hey, listen, here's just a sheet of blood work that can be done. It's posted on our website. Any doctor can do it. It's just that the majority of them don't because, number one, they don't know what to do with them when they get the results back. Number two, they have to try to justify the insurance of why they want to have them done. Because remember, our current healthcare system is always looking for every disease in the planet. And most young people don't present too many things as far as disease processes. So they have to have some justification to do them instead of just trying to stay healthy and look and make sure that nothing's thrown off. So the idea is, I, I believe that anybody can do it. it. They can, it doesn't matter as long as it, and actually on top of it, you don't even need a doctor to have it done. You can legitimately go to a lab and get them done and don't need a doctor whatsoever. It's just that our current form of healthcare kind of has made themselves the gatekeeper. And so people just say, well, my doctor won't do it. Well, then do it on your own. Well, and, and really what it comes down to, they're just a gatekeeper to insurance. Well, and also, I mean, I have the same experience. It's intimidating. I don't know how to understand what these results say, you know? So it's nice to have somebody like you or a doctor. I think that's where people get freaked out when you're like, well, you can do it yourself, but okay. But I, I mean, yeah. I don't understand that stuff. Yeah, you still need a person guiding you. And, uh, but that's the thing. And the reason why the majority of conventional doctors will not do them is because they don't know what to do with them. And it's been said to, to thousands of our patients that we get the labs back. And, um, and there's not one marker you can't look up yourself. It's just that in, when you look at most things that when people say, why don't doctors handle these? If they don't have a form of treatment for them, they're not going to do them. What can hormone testing tell you? It can tell you so many things. Let's start here. There's physical and psychological things that are affected by the whole hormonal system. And um, so therefore, it can even predict what's going to happen to you in the future as far as certain cancers and stuff. So it's a, it's, it's a, such a wide variety of things because it's almost like a blanket picture because if you really look at hormone stands for, it stands for message. That's what a hormone is, just a messenger. So therefore, it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on and how your body's talking to itself and the confined problems that you didn't even really know existed. Do you do the same labs for every single client? It's kind of the same, um, just because, you know, let's say a person comes in with, um, let's say endometriosis or PCOS, there will be a little bit more dominant hormones with PCOS compared to endometriosis. You're going to have more androgens, more testosterone dominant with something like PCOS. Yet endometriosis, you're going to have a little bit more of the estrogens that are elevated, but you still want to know all of them because they do convert into other forms. And on top of it, it could have stemmed from something else that was there. So having a picture of the androgens compared to the estrogens, guess what happens? It's going to be a wonderful picture to see what's going on. And therefore, it's going to you know, be able to give you a picture of some of their past and also a really big predictor of what's going to happen in the future. But there are all, also all of these, there's these different things I hear about, like yep. there's blood testing, yep. there's a gut microbiome mm -hmm. test, sure. and then some stool test, or is that the same? Um, and then Dutch test, like all these different yeah. things. Well, those are dramatically different labs. Do you like some of those more than others, I guess, is what I'm wondering. Depends what the person comes in with. Okay. You know, saying okay. what they present with. And on top of it, you might start with one lab, and the body will be saying, okay, this is what's going on. For example, um, if you do have an autoimmune process, uh, there is some immune trigger. So you might have to do additional tests once you get some hormonal testing done. Because hormones can actually direct you a little bit of like some of the areas of the body that are majorly off. So you couldn't, you can find out sometimes there's immune problems from hormonal testing. And therefore, okay, then you can do a little bit more dig or deep on that. Now, to be clear, mm -hmm. and I may be wrong on this, you don't diagnose people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So you can look, though, at patterns in somebody's hormonal testings and kind of along with knowing their health history, help them get on the right path with their hormones. So explain yep. like your process and what you do. Most people present into our offices because they have some condition. They really do. They have some diagnosis and they ha usually have failed care. They've progressively get worse. Their doctor's not giving answers. They're frustrated. And then we go, OK, listen, so let's just pick PCOS because right now it's becoming a very dominant condition that roughly 10% of the women across the world suffer from right now. Now, what that does now, well, you understand that there's going to be certain hormones that are dominant, so you're going to run those labs on there. And then what's going to do, you're going to see them and go, okay,